So I was Facebooking, and I came across this cause, posted by a Muslim friend. So we got into an interesting discussion about it, which I have heavily annotated. Here is the cause. Google Inc. should block all content related to the disrespect of Prophet Muhammad. No one has the right to disrespect any religion or any particular group of people. This is the line I focused on. Related to the disrespect of the Prophet, wouldn't that include the petition itself? But the petition has a much more serious contradiction involved, which I'll get to later. It continues, This war against Muslims should stop and the world should become peaceful. This last sentence I didn't notice, so I didn't touch on it in this little exchange, although it is, of course, extremely stupid. The world should become peaceful. It's like dealing with a particularly slow child. The world won't change itself, and it won't become peaceful by itself. People have to make it peaceful. A good way to create a peaceful world is to condemn acts of violence, not acts of criticism, which consist entirely of words, and do not consist of blowing things up. So anyway, I opened with this. What if your religion says you can disrespect the religions of others? This isn't just semantics, this is a real dilemma. You either let people criticise religions freely, or you infringe religious freedom to criticise, which is itself a form of disrespect. And the solution that the people pushing this cause want to give is half of the problem. Protect the religions with the most political clout, i.e. the ones who blow shit up a lot. There is no principle of protection of religious immunity from mockery and disrespect in the minds of the would-be lawmakers, and there never has been. It's nothing more than a purely pragmatic way of trying to appease the thuggish and violent mobs of Islam, while trying to make the law a general one, in order to disguise the improvised nature of the attempted legislation. It's also a short-term solution to a long-term problem, like removing a wound from sight rather than treating it. Islam and the West cannot undo their meeting. To act like the Rushdie affair, the Danish cartoons, and now this Innocence of Muslims incident, are merely the result of crass and hasty action on the part of individuals is foolish. It's a war of ideas. It's a clash between secularism and religious totalitarianism. It's about having an open or closed society. Those who favour free speech want an open society. Those who want no free speech, or free speech which is compromised to protect the interest of large gangs, are enemies of the open society. Back to my dilemma, part of the problem is that religions are very easy to create, meaning that almost anyone can invoke a religion to avoid mockery. Just look at Mormonism, for instance, and all the other wacky cults hanging around. We know that Joseph Smith was a fraud, and we know precisely how he pulled off his trickery. Scholars of religion nevertheless class Mormonism and all these other cults as religions. Are we really going to immunize all of them from disrespect? What about the weird ones whose four or so adherents believe in alien abductions and other such nonsense? What if we had the Church of Religious Deprecation? A church that reminds men that there is no God and mocks religions which worship God or gods. If you don't allow religions to disrespect each other, then you inevitably step on the toes of re religious freedom, which seems to me disrespectful. Legislating against mockery of all religion cannot be done without contradiction, because religion is so ubiquitous and varied. But I suspect that was never the point. The point is to smooth over tensions with Islam. One possible solution to my dilemma is to sidestep these problems, as my friend did thusly. It doesn't, we're not allowed especially the Abrahamic faiths. Because if I disrespected the Jews and Christians, I am disrespecting Jesus and David and Moses, whom are all prophets of Islam too. Now, I didn't ask my friend about his particular religion. I was attempting to pose a problem based on a thought experiment. However, the answer, pointing to features of one's own religion, seems to underscore the underlying motive of this petition. The point isn't to secure protection for all religions. The point is to protect Islam and appease Muslims and just hope the violence stops. It's a hasty solution which doesn't address the problem. Not all religions are enemies of the open society. Jainism, for instance, doesn't seem to be really worth mocking or debunking since it isn't trying to legislate universal nakedness or fine people who accidentally kill bugs. It doesn't make the mistake of trying to force its own values onto everyone. I didn't think as I stated my dilemma very well since I didn't make myself understood, so I stated it again, perhaps more clearly. What if there was a religion which had a criticise of a religion ceremony? You either allow it to do so, 
which goes against trying to quell criticism, or you don't allow it, which means infringing on someone else's religion. This is hypothetical, but what's to stop me inventing my own religion? People do it all the time. I made one mistake I ought to have kept with disrespect, rather than criticism, but simply didn't realise, and I oscillated a few times between these two words, although it seems that for many Muslims, these two things are one and the same. Anyway, the dilemma to me seems to be the same either way. Trying to quell criticism, or ridicule of religion, is a self-refuting enterprise, and for the same reason. I gave the hypothetical church of religious deprecation. However, there is no real need to do this when there are real-life cases. What about the pastor Terry Jones, who was going to have a Quran burning? Surely he could claim this as a religious duty if he wanted to. What would religion be without religious hatred and bigotry? Hasn't anyone heard of the Crusades? It's also easy to get rights based on an invented religion, as this pastor in headgear demonstrates. My friend grasped the problem I wanted to pose, and he replied, But if you made a religion with the simple reason to criticise the faith of others, then there are flaws. A religion has a more higher moral purpose. For example, spreading equality, peace and morals back into society that were lost. Well, of course it's easy to think of cases where religious criticism is a religious requirement, but there are other problems too. Now, this friend of mine is a pretty nice guy. I've challenged him a few times on Islam, and he never gives me the standard. You're a shrill atheist line. Still, this answer was pretty poor, and I couldn't resist ripping Islam a new one in my next comment, but before I show that, consider the statement, religion has a higher moral purpose. It's circular. Criticism is disallowed. Making a religion to criticize religion is disallowed. So how can a person know that religion has a higher moral purpose if they haven't heard the criticisms and thought about them. If no one is allowed to mention the terrorism, the child rape, and the all-round oppression, then the case for the higher moral purpose of this particular religion is still waiting to be made, and the peace and equality that were lost. This is very devious reasoning. When a system fails, it's no good saying that the system was not adhered to closely enough. For example, communism. It failed in Russia. It's no good saying that it's because the Russians didn't follow communism closely enough, and yet there is a strain of Islamic narrative that seeks to explain away every problem by saying that things would be better if only they could eradicate, yet more thoroughly, alcohol and drugs and promiscuity in countries where these things are already tantamount to suicide. Well, people must be engaging in these things, since we have so many problems. This reasoning is ad hoc and uninformative. The problem is not the incomplete application of the system, the problem is the system itself. And given religious corruption, it could well be the case that the church of religious deprecation has a real point to make, giving it a higher moral purpose. So any attempt to quell criticism or ridicule simply collapses in on itself. There is a glaring contradiction in attempting to legislate against criticism or mockery of religion. The problem is that religions are too easy to create and too ridiculous. These two things taken together make mockery both intellectually and morally essential, and impossible to prevent. To truly avoid mocking religion, we would have to dispense with mockery entirely, since near enough anything can be a religion. We need criticism, and we need ridicule. The line, no one has the right to disrespect any religion, is blatantly false, unless you live in a closed, totalitarian society where nothing works, and people do nothing but study the Quran and stone each other for showing too much leg. But we live in an open society. Mocking bad ideas is the best corrective to the countless forms of intellectual filth whose prolificacy is a direct result of the open society. And lest anyone think I'm arguing in a circle, I do go on to demonstrate that Islam really is morally and intellectually empty, as follows. All religions are flawed, that's why we criticize them. It's also why people try to make criticizing religion illegal. Criticizing science isn't illegal, because science can stand up to criticism. Religion cannot, so it tries to protect itself via legislation. There are flaws in people who believe in the faith, not the faith itself. For example, if you probably pointed out a flaw in Islam, it's probably not a flaw within itself. It's a flaw within the people who believe in Islam and take things out of context to suit their needs. No, sex with nine-year-olds is a flaw, which only an apologist would try to harmonize. This is why people like me take the time to criticize faith, to have a religion with such a glaring error in it, and then to demand this religion be exempt from criticism is absurd and morally wrong.